howdy everybody i'm tom vassell welcome to board game breakfast this is it the end of october we move into the last two months of the year this is ooh, halloween week so there's a lot of things going on uh, i want to quick do a shout out to pandasars who sponsors this show god loves dinosaurs came out last week this week ohanami is coming out there's a little card game folks have already reviewed this i really love this little card game uh beautiful artwork simplicity this takes the game which is another game that pandasars makes which i thought was okay and makes it into something more competitive and I thought very fun. We're giving out three copies of this to people in North America. All you got to do to get one of these copies is email us at contest at dicetower.com and in the subject line just put pretty p-r-e-t-t-y because that's why because that's what this game is. Pretty in the subject line and then the uh, body just put your address this is for those in North America we got three random copies you have a week to enter if you get an email from us you'll know you've won so what's going on last week we did digital spiel if you missed it go back and check it out we played many different games so if you've been curious how Kingdom Rush plays or bees plays or holy plays you can go back and you can see those games being played and it will give you hopefully a really good feel to whether that's a game for you or not many of those games that we played last week some of them I already reviewed the rest will be reviewed in the future at some point in time so I'm hoping that you enjoy that and we look forward to seeing what you think about that um, so that's what happened last week. This week we moved into back to some normality, although we're going to be doing a little bit of spooky uh, game playing, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in this episode. Speaking of this episode, let's get it started. For what I found on the internet this week, I just wanted to point out actual you know, the, the Spiel Digital. So there's a lot of these things going on. And of course, last week, we definitely pointed you towards our stuff, you know, towards the games that we play. But there's a lot of different videos out there, a lot of different things. And the Spiel has a portal itself. You can go to their website and you can, it's, it's kind of like this land and you click on the different areas and then that area takes you to different kinds of games. You click on that company. Many of these games, you might want a lot of these games, you can order directly from the publishers. So it's a way if you're looking for some of the games to go ahead and get those games and then of course uh, I mean it's a little too late maybe to get into demos of those games but you might see videos on how the game plays or videos on you know the different things that the game works with so I think that's a pretty neat thing um, obviously not as good as an actual convention but convention convention um, but I'm mixing the word con and convention I'm getting off topic. Anyway, check it out. The digital spiel thing will have a link in the description for you to go look at it and see. I mean, there's so many new games that came out. We played a lot of them last week, but we didn't even come close to playing a fraction of the games that are out there. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from University. Today, we are going to talk about Pastelli. Or pastelli. Or pastelli. I'm Thank not, you. I'm not sure. It's a pastel coloured game where you're counting your number of passes. So, yeah, we're not quite sure how you pronounce it, but either way, it's a it's an abstract tile um, laying uh, network building game. Yes, you get two actions per turn, and those actions can be moving the pieces or placing a tile. And you want to try to connect your coloured dots going over as many tiles as possible. Because it'll yeah. score you more points. Yep, and as you do it, you count up the number of passes, and each time you enter a tile, it's a number of passes equal to its height. So yeah, this link here is one, two, three, four. This link here is one, two, three. It's a total of seven, and then your number of passes between your four tokens uh, converts to a number of victory points that you then score. It's really nice filler type of game, like we'll play a lot of heavy games, so this is filler games, but it's neatly made. It's two to three players. Yeah, it would be too, uh, it'd be too busy with four, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, it's ultimately a race to 50 points, or whoever's got the most when one of these stacks is empty. So it's a neat little game, it's the sort of thing you can break out at a, you know, a casual sort of party or a meetup or something like that. 
very simple rules anyone can get in on quickly. Uh, except if I, if some people can be a little bit AP because of the rotation and then the planning of the game. If you're a bit like me with uh, that struggles a little bit with spatial rotation, then you might need the timer, the send timer, to be on. Yes, you can speed the game up with the timer. And we are Meeple University on YouTube and on the Dice Tower. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hi everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Today we're talking about School of Sorcery. This is from Dr. Finn's Games. Uh, this is a two-player game where basically what's happening is you are trying to have the majority of these little crystals on these particular cards. And the cards are going to give you all kinds of special abilities, um, but you have to get... It's also where you get your victory points, which have to have the majorities. Um, but it's all run by these dice and these cards that distribute these gems out there, and it's pretty clever. Yeah, I really like the dice in this game because it makes sense with what's everything that's out there and that you can mitigate them, you can change them, you can move them around, you can try to flip and use the other side of the dice. So it's not like you are stuck with what you get and you can kind of psych out your opponent. Like you can put a certain card down because the card is telling you it's secret to your opponent and you don't know how many gems you're putting on the dice that is assigned in front of you. So you can kind of psych out your opponent it to see what they're gonna do if they're in the same spot and guess what they just wasted all their gems and you didn't yeah. and that happens to me a lot yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it was pretty clever how uh, it had this, like, this kind of this blind bidding aspect to it but also it had like an area majority area control kind of thing going on which I hadn't seen yeah. those two things combined before so I thought that was kind of neat it worked well, well together well, if you'd like to hear more from us, you can always find us on Facebook or YouTube. We are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Well, everybody, this is Ryan. I'm Bethany. Hoping you have a happy, healthy breakfast. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Today I want to take a look real quick at Achievement Unlocked, Lost Version and Game Design by Jeff Engelstein. Realize I'm a little bit biased here because Jeff Engelstein has been part of the Dice Tower for a while. And in fact, if you look in the preface, you know, he mentions the Dice Tower podcast here. So what is exactly in this book? Let's take it out of the... I'm not a big fan of dust jackets myself. I like books to look nice and clean. But in here, he talks about various things, and he's talked about these on the podcast here. Loss aversion, endowment effect, framing utility theory, etc. And Jeff just talks about these and about, for example, this is about a board game here. So he's talking about First Martians and Robinson Crusoe. And why did Robinson Crusoe succeed in punishing players where Martians failed? And, you know, you can see there's examples here. Jeff is one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. And he takes that and brings it into games. This is really cool. If you ever know anybody who is uh, someone who says, you know, oh, you play board games, that's for children, you can show them this book. And I really like how he takes various games. And, and you don't have to even know the games. You know, this, this could be for someone who doesn't know the games at all. And here he's showing Agricola and Feast for Odin. And he talks, for example, about how games punish people. And then how this actually affects real life and affects board games itself. I really like it. It's not a very long book. It's 100 and f uh, 120 some 120 pages with different credits, a few black and white pictures. You know, if you're here for the pictures, it's probably not the best place to go. But it's a nice little book. Now, these are expansions and things that he's already put on the Dice Tower. But this is definitely a book that I would recommend everyone to check out, uh, whether you're a board game fan or you just like theory in this regard. It's pretty neat. So that's Achievement Relocked from Jeff Engelstein. Hey, I'm comedian Grant Lyon with Grant's Game Rex. And today, I want to recommend one of my favorite games of 2020, Tiny Epic Galaxies Blast Off. Hey! This is part of the Tiny Epic series, which are all awesome because they combine a ton of strategy into a box that is very small. Uh, I feel like the slogan for the series could just be small box, big strategy, which alternatively is very fun to say in a sexy voice. Small box. Big strategy. I'm just realizing I have a creepy mustache and I can't say things like that right now. <laughs> you are rolling dice and then using the dice abilities to send your spaceships 
out to neighboring planets. If you land on the surface of the planet, you can get the special ability, or you can try to move up the colonization track and claim the planet. With all the different planets that come out and the various special abilities on them, this game has really high replayability. Plus, it's got these awesome little spaceships, so you can really tap into that childlike part of yourself that used to love spaceships, you know? Every time I go to fly my spaceship to a new planet, I do it like this. Three, two, one, blast up! Mom! Mom, Grant won't land his spaceship! He's doing the thing again where he just flies it all over! Mom! Mom, can you come here and tell him to land his spaceship? Mom, I want to play the game and not watch him fly his spaceship the whole time! Mom! So what's coming from the Dice Tower this week? Well, there's going to be some reviews. I don't know how many because we're making some changes in the Dice Tower studio this week. We're, we're changing software and streaming equipment to make things smoother. We're, we're moving some tables around. So there's gonna be some Dice Tower internal stuff, but don't worry, that doesn't mean there's not videos coming out this week. We have lots of videos from our contributors, but more importantly, Eric Summer, my host on the Dice Tower podcast, not only do he and I have a podcast coming out on Tuesday uh, talking about our top 10 one-hit wonders, but he's starting his top 100 games of all time. So you'll see those this week. Also, Werewolf Games are back. And I've alluded to this earlier in Board Game Breakfast, but on Friday, we're going to be playing through a few spooky games you know, in celebration of Halloween. So we're going to be taking, we're, I think we're going to be, we're, our goals are at this point in time to play Mansions of Madness, to play Horrified, and to play the new uh, Walking Dead zombie side. So uh, the things might change and stuff, but that's all planned for Friday. This is just us playing for fun. Um, so hopefully you come and enjoy those with us. So that being said, there's lots of different things coming out. Of course, check out all the podcasts on the Dice Tower Network. Many great things coming out. Let's keep moving. Hey everyone, it's Clara and I'm back talking about another board game that I haven't played but I think I'd really enjoy. And I'm going to start by talking about one of my favourite board games of all time, Seasons. I adore this game. Uh, during this game you're rolling these gorgeous chunky dice. Uh, the different colours match the different seasons, they're the ones that you roll. These give you resources and you use those resources to play cards in front of you uh, and build an engine. Now there's quite a lot of these cards to choose from and they can have quite a lot of text. And at the start of the game, you draft nine of these cards, which can take quite a long time. And I should say there's only like one repeat of each card in here, although this does also include the expansions. So it can be quite a steep learning curve. And also it takes ages if there's more than two players to play. So there's quite a big barrier to actually being able to play it. Uh, it's really got to be someone that you already knows the game or it's an awful lot easier if it is and more fun. But what about a gateway game? What about if we introduce these concepts? And I'm looking at the game Paper Tales as that potential gateway game to Seasons as my way of getting people in because it's got the same core mechanics. At the start of the four rounds, at the start of each of the four rounds, you're drafting cards, but there's only five cards that you're drafting and the text is a lot simpler. There's more repeats and also there's less stuff that they do. So just a lot less complex than in Seasons. And then you play those in front of you to build your engine and use them to generate resources. However, the cards in front of you, the engines change it because they only stick around for one or two rounds. They age and die off. So you're constantly changing your engine. However, you can use those resources to build buildings which stick around and give you permanent boons. So like I say, it's a much simpler game, but I think that there's some of the core aspects are have got you know the same as in seasons. And so I think I'd really enjoy it, but I'm curious what you think. So do let me know if you enjoy Paper Tales and Seasons in the comments below. Bye!
Hey there Dice Tower fans, my name is Dave here at Game Vine, and today we're going to be doing our very first board game smash up. Now this is where we take a few pieces from different games to make a smashing good experience. Today's docket has two games, Coconuts and Tumbling Dice. So if you have these two games, we're going to smash them up and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go to the table. Okay, so here is the smash up combination of coconuts and tumbling dice. I don't know what to really call it, I haven't settled on the name, either tumbling coconuts or coconut dice. So, this is what a basic game would be set up like, but I think you should add a cup or two at the end. Voila! Yeah, it is gonna make the dice bounce off of them and you have less of a hazard but you also have more things to shoot for. You're not gonna get the cups unless you really go for it. And if you go for it, you're either gonna hit or you're gonna miss. And in my case, I think the, uh, the yellow cup is four times and the red cup is five times. So once you have this set up, get the dice a flying. So basically, you just, uh, you'll get your rhythm. There are some times, ooh, look at that. There are some times where it just goes on wonky. Uh, you can tell I will shoot one of these coconuts. You know, coconuts really don't stay on the table, but the dice definitely do. And let's see if I can go for the cup. Well, that was a little bit too much. Okay. Oh, you okay, so cool. Now, <laughs> it just, I get so excited. I just made this creation and I'm just giddy. So you continue to do this and you give everybody their own monkey and then you play tumbling dice just the same way with a few altered rolls and monkeys. So this is what you can do with these two games if you have them. I hope you enjoy that first board game smash up and my name is Dave. Come join me at my channel over here at GameVine. Until the next time that I see you, have a great rest of your day and a great time with all of your play. I'm out, everybody. Bye. Hey there, folks. This is Brandon with All Aboard Gamer. And yes, I am the one in the kitchen this morning for this episode of Perfect Pairings. And I prepared a breakfast dish for you called Kaiserschmarrn, which is German for scrambled pancakes or more literally emperor's mess. So come along and let me show you how it's done. So what you're going to want is three tablespoons of salted butter. You want four eggs separated, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, two cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of milk. Plop in the two tablespoons of butter and we're going to cream this until it's frothy. The first thing we're going to add is our sugar. So egg yolks go in next. Our flour. Cream the uh, egg whites until firm. Now we're going to fold this in into our primary batter. In with all of it. <laughs> and the game is Hospital Connect. And the word Hospel Connect actually comes from two words. Hospel is the word, an ancient uh, uh, German word for crank or winder. And the connect, this word, is servant. And so really, the word is crank servant. It was the person that wasn't valued. And I think a game that puts that on display and really shows, okay, maybe they didn't have a very high intellect, engaging job. But it was a very important job. All right, that's going to do it for this Dice Tower edition of Perfect Pairings. If you want to check out the whole episode, head over to our YouTube channel, All Aboard Gamer. And we hope you enjoy, enjoy your breakfast. breakfast. <laughs>Last week, I talked about the separating the art from the artist, and I had some people email me and go, what's going on? The answer is nothing's going on. In fact, I deliberately waited till there was nothing going on. So what I said last week and what I said today has no bearing on any specific thing, but it's something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Today, I want to talk about who is welcome at my gaming table. I'll do a side to that next week on who is not welcome at my gaming table. But today we live in a fairly divided society, whether it's on politics or morality or whatever. It's a very divided society to the point where if you don't see that, then you are very fortunate and are probably not either looking at the news and or social media. I have myself cut a lot of my social media out of my life and I found that that's helped my mental health quite a bit. I'm 
on, not on Twitter at all at this point, and barely on Facebook. Just go in there to look at different groups and things. And I found that I really enjoyed that. But at my gaming table, people who are welcome to come. Now, obviously, we're talking in a necessarily post-COVID world. Uh, we're talking about a place where people can come to. But what I want to say is people who are welcome at my table, there's one thing that does not affect you coming to my table, and that's what you think. See, everyone has different thoughts on life in general, and everyone has different opinions. And in fact, if I only had people at my table who thought the same as me, it would be a very small group indeed. Now, you may not know everything about what I think and believe, but some things can be certainly inferred. I'm a Christian, and so I follow Christian tenets, uh, biblical principles, uh, of, uh, affect a lot of my life. I keep my political views very closely to my chest, and I think they would surprise people if they knew what they were, but they certainly don't align with any one particular political party. I have different thoughts on all the various issues. But I don't necessarily ascribe those views or beliefs on the people who come to my table. If I did, it would be a very, very tiny group of only extremely like-minded people who came to me. Now, there are certainly views out there that I might say, I find that view totally abhorrent. But that's gonna, those people may find my views to be the exact same way, and I am not sure, and for me, I am not convinced that that would disallow you from coming and playing with me. See, I, again, I said I was a Christian. One of the basic tenets of Christianity is kindness. The Bible says, be ye kind one to another. And I feel like I need to subscribe to that theory. I need to be able to invite people and have them in. And I always say, if the Dice Tower is going to err, I hope we would err on the side of kindness. What does this mean? This means that when I allow someone at my table, that does not mean in any way that I espouse their viewpoints. I, I could highly disagree with somebody who comes and games with me. And it doesn't mean that I welcome those viewpoints or even really a discussion on those viewpoints at the table. Now, I do think board gaming is fantastic. I think board gaming is a place where everybody can and should be welcome to it. And the fact that we could even come and possibly have a discussion on those viewpoints, but they don't have to be there. In fact, sometimes, depending on what they are, I don't want them at the table. But that doesn't mean the person who has those viewpoints, whether they espouse them on their social media or whatever, that doesn't mean they're not allowed at the table. And it doesn't mean that if that person comes to the table, the people that they're opposed to, that I'm kind of throwing a slap in their face because that's often thrown at me. If person A is welcome at your table, then you are saying you don't care about me. That is, that cannot be farther from the truth and that puts me in a situation, a false dichotomy, which I do not believe exists. I want to form relationships in gaming. I want to form relationships with people. I do not believe that dividing ourselves up into extreme subgroups, which has happened in the past and will certainly happen in the future, helps us at all and definitely won't help gaming. I want to learn from each other. You say there's no way I can learn from someone whose views are so diametrically opposed to mine. And that's fine again. That is something that you can do. But for myself, I want to learn. I want to say maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You say, well, then this issue, there's no way I'm wrong. And that, that could very well be true. Then how about I invite them to my table so that they can learn from me? Now, this is an interesting thing here because this does not just affect my gaming table, but this affects my gaming show, the Dice Tower itself. You may not have noticed, but on the Dice Tower show, on our podcast, on the video show, specifically here, Board Game Breakfast, we have a wide swath of contributors. And I can 100% guarantee you that all their beliefs and all their viewpoints do not mirror each other. You will see very wide range of viewpoints. And that is by design from myself. I want a lot of different viewpoints and things. Now, that being said, on my show itself, I pushed that on my show, on the Dice Tower show, we are talking about board games and the issues that affect board gaming. People's political viewpoints, people's uh, religious viewpoints, people's moral viewpoints, they can have those on social media or wherever it might be, but that is a separate thing and that does not affect the Dice Tower. And I'll get emails where someone will say, so-and-so said this and that reflects on Dice Tower. 
I, I, don't, I refuse to allow it to reflect on me. I refuse to allow that. I want this to be a place where we come together and talk about games, and I want the Dice Tower to stand out and be something different. A place where you can go there and say, I'm not looking at this as a conservative or a liberal or whatever show. I'm looking at it as a show that follows the vision of Tom Vassell, which is, on some levels, there's certain things. The show's going to be family friendly. The show is, major you know, a majority of the show is about board games and the people who play them. And other than that, there's a huge circle there, and we have a wide range of people who are welcome there. This is not a 100% thing. There's obviously exceptions to every rule. I would dare say, though, that my exceptions are fewer and farther in between. The people who are not allowed on the Dice Tower show are an extremely tiny group. Because I keep thinking about those we disclude. I keep going back to when I was a kid, and I was excluded from many things because I was a geek. And back in the 80s, being a geek was not very cool. I was excluded from things, and I didn't care for that. I'm excluded from things now because of the way I believe or the way I think. I don't necessarily care for that, but I can live with it. I'm not saying everyone else needs to subscribe to these. You may find someone's views so abhorrent, so far beyond yours, that you just cannot deal with that person. And that's you. But again, like I said last week, I don't think you have the right to tell me who I necessarily can hang out with. And if you say, well, if you hang out with that person, then I can't come. I'm not welcome. I, you know, it just, it just worries me. We, we often will say, well, this person is, is, their views are terrible, they're bad, we should ostracize them. And it's always the, the badness of someone is basically how much their viewpoints differ from our own. I found that to be the case. And I've definitely had people email me about others. And again, this is, a lot of this is in the past and things I'm not, again, I'm not speaking on any specific case. And say, you know, you need to kick this person out. You need to make an example of this person. And I just don't want to. I'm here to show that we can get along. And I know that's a bit kumbaya-ish, and it's also not possible in a very, very divided world. But as a dice tower, we're going to attempt to do that. Now, like I said, next week I'm going to talk about people who aren't welcome at my gaming table. But it may not be exactly what you're thinking in that regard, and it will actually probably be a shorter uh, segment than this one. And also, I find that last week's segment was somewhat controversial. I got some emails back on that, and I fully expect today's segment to be controversial, which is a little funny to me, the fact that I say, hey, you know, essentially I'm saying, why can't we all get along? And that's very controversial. But we're going to, I would imagine that next week and the week after that, with the different things that are happening in the world, we're going to become a more divided community than ever. But the Dice Tower is going to try to, as much as possible, refuse to take sides, to come in here and say, you know, everyone else excludes you, here's a place where you can feel welcome. Because I feel really strongly about that, and that's what I think today. Today on the Plastic Canvas, we're turning the ATST from Star Wars Imperial Assault from this into this in just two minutes. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas, and today on Two Minute Mini, we're painting the ATST from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Now, painting the ATST was tons of fun because not only is it the first vehicle that I've ever painted, and also the first mini that's required assembly, but also the majority of the time was spent doing different weathering effects. And this was heaps of fun because there's no real right or wrong way to do it, it's just messing around with different techniques and different tones to build up a cool weathered effect by the end. So the base coating was really, really simple for the ATST because it was just using a dark, medium, and light gray with my airbrush just to build up a zenithal base coat, and then onto the different weathering effects. So I started by putting a black wash down and then giving it just enough time to dry so that as I wiped off the excess, it had inconsistently dried, which left behind some sort of streaky rain-like effects. Then I used a sponge to dab on a black-brown mix to do like 
like a dirt spattered kind of effect. Then I put on some dobs of brown, uh, green and yellow wash. Then with lots and lots of water to thin it down, spread that around to give a kind of environmentally stained sort of look. Just to kind of give the impression as though it's been walking through the jungle. And now we're doing our basic outdoorsy sort of looking base just to tie in with that staining as well. This was tons and tons of fun to paint. Really, really happy with how it came up. But if you'd like to see the full version of this video, you can head over to my channel, The Plastic Canvas. And I hope you enjoy your breakfast. Hi, I'm Ambie, and today I'm going to talk about Racing Stars, which is a roll and write game about kart racing and killing monsters. In Racing Stars, you're controlling five different magical girl kart racers as they race around this track, collecting power ups and killing monsters along the way. Each turn, you're going to be rolling five polyhedral dice, and you'll assign one die to each racer. The die number will determine how many spaces the racer can move that turn or their speed, and they're allowed to make one 90 degree turn per turn. In order to kill monsters, you need to be going at a high speed, but if you're going too fast and you end up running into a wall or running into another cart, then you lose life. So because you have limited turning ability, it can be hard to maneuver to kill monsters and not crash. The racer will also get hurt if their speed is too low and they get too near to a monster because the monster will attack them. So you're trying to balance out having a high speed but also maneuvering so that you don't crash into other barriers. Also, each racer can only kill two monsters, so you can't just have a dedicated racer to be the monster killer and go on ahead of everyone else. You have to balance out the killing of the monsters. Another neat thing is that each racer can draft off of other racers' trails, so sometimes you'll want to be crossing over their previous paths in order to go faster, but once again you have to make sure you don't go too fast and crash into walls. Each racer has their own special ability that breaks the rules, plus when you get power-ups, each racer has a special ability that they use those power-ups for. So in order to get a good score, you need to balance using the different racers for their different powers, and also killing monsters, getting the power-ups, and crossing the finish line to get more points. There's only one map in Racing Stars and the starting positions are set, so over multiple plays it could get repetitive since it's a puzzly game. But overall, it's a quick, fun spatial game with a cool theme. Bye! what you want to play and you just look at your games for hours and hours well just shut up and choose a game but oh, there's so many games <laughs> but I bet you don't have this one castle itter or either either or it's itter either it castle itter the strangest battle of World War II. Don't you want to play? Don't you want to know what this is all about? On May 5th, 1945, just a couple of minutes before the end of World War II, there was a castle where there was prisoners, French, high-profile prisoners, kept in that castle, right? And there was German soldiers. Well, when the Americans came in, they knew the war was over, the Germans, right? So these guys got together with the Germans. The Americans got together with the Germans. Not the guys in the castle, but some other guys they found in the street with even an SS officer. Bad guy. And they fought together. The Germans and the Americans fought together to free the Frenchmen in there. Did they succeed? I don't know, play the game! How many players? One or two, it's a solo game! <laughs> How long does it take to play? 45 minutes! 45 minutes to an hour. Is it fun? Yeah. So basically this is a state of siege game, right? But the funny thing is that the state of siege is against you and with you, and against them and with them. It's crazy! Both people are waiting for reinforcements. The Germans and the Americans. With the Germans. So, one to two player game takes about 45 minutes to play, and it's so easy that even little monsters like this can play! And this game, you win by points. And you know how many points it takes to win this game? One! So here we get to see the components of the game. You got a nice map, not too busy, that's just trees, lots of chits, cards, cards, fog of war, fog of war, that's what cards do, fog of war. And... Dice. 
and it just dropped some water on me. But anyways, so basically this game is you waiting it out with them pounding you with all their forces and you pounding them with all their forces. You roll a die, you check what that's written on the chits in defense and attack. Nothing complicated at all, nothing. This is a game designed by David Thompson and published by Dan Versen Games. You got it, DVG! DVG, DVG! <laughs> you wanna know more about Castle Itter or any other DVG game? Check out No Enemies Here every Saturday morning. See ya. That's it for another Board Game Breakfast. Here we go, lots of videos coming your way this week, of course, in the podcast. We hope you're having a fantastic year. I know many of you are not. I know many of you have been stuck at home for a long time, and I feel for you. I mean, even I'm going back and forth from the studio to home for the most part. You know, things have changed, but hopefully the Dice Tower this year has been instrumental in making at least some of your life better. And we would like to continue to do that. We're going to work hard to make sure that there's continual things for you to watch. And if, again, if you run out of stuff, uh, just as a heads up, there's like 6,000 backlogs of videos. And then even if you run out of that, there's other fantastic channels out there about board gaming. There's all kinds of cool stuff out. Have fun gaming, but also have fun just going out there and consuming these different things. There's a lot of cool solo games. There's games people can play online. I hope that you can partake in that. Thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate it. I read every comment written on these. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production.